tired of trying. I wish you would take my radio to bathe with you. Plugged in and ready to fall. <laughs> Hey guys, Luke Style here. I'm Bat Tracy. From Punk Rock Blues. The bluesiest of the two of us. I have no blue on. Me neither. This is DVD... Uh, Blu-ray slash DVD slash 4K collection update number 84. Are there any Blu-rays or D 4Ks in this? Yeah. What are we starting with? <laughs> this. That whole stack or...? Just this. You started with that. Okay. Right? First up, this one's from Breaking Glass Pictures. It came out on June 2nd. And I did a review of it, if you want to go check that out. This is Abe on DVD. This was a really good movie. I really liked it. I'd give it four stars. Mm -hmm. I did give it four stars. You should have said the In four stars. Review. They should have gone to watch the review. Go watch it. Now. Link below. Oh, I, this is the one you didn't know. This is An American in Paris with Gene Kelly. He had never heard of this movie. I had heard of it, never saw it. Yeah. I knew about it. And uh, I've heard it's great things. nominated for a bunch of awards. An altogether delightful musical holiday. What did it win? It won. For the, Does it say up here? I think there. Uh, six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, plus an honorary Oscar to Kelly. I'd give it five stars. I thought it was really good. And it's a musical, but it was really fun. Do you diss musicals? Um, they're not my favorite. You watch Pitch Perfect, and you're like, those are amazing. Those are musicals. There's music based films. It's a musical. Next up. Got Benji off the leash. I think this is a sequel to Benji. I Maybe it's the third or fourth. I don't know the Benji series. It's the only one I've seen. I thought it was pretty good for a uh, kid's movie about an abusive father. So, Benji. <laughs> Next up is the Blues Brothers 4K Steelbook. This was released by Universal on May 19th. It's been a long time since we, uh, we yeah. took a break. It was a J card that he randomly stuck back on. Well, yeah, it didn't have any glue. Oh, really? You never had glue? Yeah. So here's the... Uh, so I just left it. There's the little gospel thing, and then the back is the Blues Mobile. Which I love. Open it like that, and uh, the discs are both different, which is fun, because the Blu-ray is like, you know, oh, there you go, Blu-ray disc. But the uh, the 4K disc... Is the picture. Is actually a picture disc, and uh, the inside is them. Jake and Elwood. Let me put that one right here. Oh, you want that one in there? This is our dad's like favorite movie of all time. Yeah, or I think it's really good. Tied with first. I have it in my top 50. It's very good. It is really good. Also, one of my favorite Family Guy episodes is the one where they drive through the mall. I don't oh. remember which episode that is, but it's <laughs> one of my favorite of all time. Next up. Uh, I've been on a little bit of a Universal Monster yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, it's been fix. annoying. Uh, so I get, this is Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. And here's the uh, J card on it, if you're curious. I get to rip this one off. <laughs> Put on the J card guy. Oh, oh just came out with it. Uh, so yeah, it's like a it's like a book type, like a bound book. It's made out of like glass. Bram Stoker's. Well, it's not glass, it's pl plastic, but there's the front where it looks like he's doing cocaine. Um, blood. And then there's the back where he's wearing that. And if you notice, there's like this blood pattern around it, which is cool. Ooh, that was the J-card glue. It's like a plastic, it's like a hard plastic. But it's got a book, um, it's hard to turn the pages, it's just pictures and then a bunch of notes about the making of the movie and the story behind it, like Winona Ryder convinced Francis Ford Coppola to make the movie, which I thought was cool. Um, and then the disc kind of ended, just sits there in a little thing. But uh, I liked this movie. I thought it was pretty good. It was definitely weird, and it was more artsy-fartsy than um, a lot of the monster movies I've seen, but it was good. I liked it. If we were uh, better what we'd do, we'd show you the entire book, but... Uh... <laughs> I don't want to go through it, and it's hard to turn the pages because they're all like stuck together. Next up is Charlotte's Web on Blu-ray and DVD. I remember loving this kid. I remember loving this movie as a kid. <laughs> loving this kid. And uh, I, unlike you, read the book. Yeah. I don't also, the book. I got this I from Saint Vinny's. Don't really slide out. It only came with the DVD. The Blu-ray is not in there, so I still have to get the Blu-ray. <laughs> uh, I remember liking this a lot. Don't remember anything really about it. Pig that tries to be a spider. <laughs> that's so what you the... told me. This. And I don't think that's right. <laughs> I think it's babe with spiders instead of sheepdogs. 
I don't think that's right. It's not about a pig that wants to be a spider. Let me look up the premise. I'm pretty sure it's a pig. Here's what I think it actually is. I think it's a show pig. I'm pretty sure the pig comes to the farm for them to, like, plump it up and try to win, like, you know, but then it, like, befriends. Okay, well, I'm going to continue on. I just want to read the premise quick. Tells the story of a livestock, livestock pig named Wilbur and his friendship with a barn spider named Charlotte. When Wilbur's in danger of being slaughtered by the farmer, Charlotte writes messages praising Wilbur, such as some pig in her web in order to persuade the farmer to let him live. Next up, <laughs> it's the first of many Dupless Brothers movies that we have in this update. Yeah. Uh, this is one I bought because uh, we had it on don't DVD usually, and I really like this movie. Don't we usually do all the DVDs first? Yeah, I just figured this one we could do this together. Uh, we have the DVD of this, so it's an upgrade. Oh, it's the Dodeca Pentathlon. Um, which, this is, I think the only... No, because they directed Cyrus. I was going to say this is the only one that they don't star in, but oh. they directed Cyrus. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this one. Have you seen this one? I started it, but I think I fell asleep. Oh. It's about two brothers who compete in the Dodeca Pentathlon, which is like 25 games that they challenge each other to see I can better. I tell you how it opens. Also, this is, I think, their most mumblecore movie. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole movie. It's like this, and you can barely understand how they're saying it. It's like this. But I really like it. Next up is Downhill with Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Will Ferrell. It was released by 20th Century Fox on May 19th. No, it's just studios. Oh, yeah, that's right. 20th Century Studios. It does say studios. Yeah. I didn't watch this, but you did. And I yeah, I watched it with their parents. You didn't like it? It was fine. I'd give it three stars. I don't think it was as bad as reviews say, but, uh... It's got a really weird tone to it. Like a different kind of disaster movie. It's sad. Yeah. It's really sad. I didn't think thing. it looked good. It's really sad. All right, next up, a movie that I finally saw, and it's just as bad as I thought it would be. It's directed by Dean Devlin, Roland Emmerich's best friend. It's Geostorm with Gerard Butler. And let me tell you about this movie. It's crap. And also, Dutch Boy, that old girl, Dutch Boy. She's an old girl, that Dutch Boy, that old girl. And Gerard, Gerard Butler is the only one who knows that old girl, Dutch Boy, because she's an old girl. And he built Dutch Boy, that old girl. And listen here, Mr. President, I'm going to punch you in the face, because you're going to use the weather for bad stuff. And I'm going to stop the weather with Dutch Boy, that old girl. Because I built that thing. But I got fired from NASA, even though I saved the world with Dutch Boy, that old girl. And also, if this was a real life situation, Twitter would be up in flames that I got fired, Mr. President, because of Dutch Boy, that old girl. Uh, my, bro my brother was in the movie 21. <laughs> I might have the actor wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but does Gerard Butler call anyone a young man in this movie? I'm pretty sure that's Russell Crowe. That's it? Russell Crowe. Okay. <laughs> No, <laughs> there's also a part in this where they he someone goes, uh, "Hey, honey," and the the president's like, "Honey," and she's like, "We didn't tell you that part," because they're together. Uh, it's, it's so stupid. <laughs> I don't know why anyone signed on to be in this movie. <laughs> Jim Sturgis, that's his name. <laughs> President Jim Sturgis. He no, no, no. Himself. Ed Harris is the president. Oh. Jim Sturgis is the brother who was in 21. Uh, next up is Gunshy with Antonio Banderas on Blu-ray. You saw a trailer for this in a movie you were watching and instantly bought it. Yeah, it was on the trailer too. Sorry, I didn't find a device named trailer. That's fine, and we'll mute you. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Oh, it was on the um, trailer for Killing Gunther. Oh, okay. Well, it's Gunshy. Did you watch it yet? Yeah. Was it good? I thought it was fun. It's good. It wasn't as good as the trailer led me uh, to believe, but it was fun. It looked fun. Yeah, it was. It was It was a fun role for Antonio Banderas. I think he got to shine. <laughs> Next up, this one was released by Lionsgate on April 28th, and this was a banger of a movie, one that I absolutely loved. This is Guns Akimbo with Daniel Radcliffe. And I loved it. I'm going to give it five stars. Uh, it's one of my favorite of the year that I've seen. And it was really, really good. And Daniel Radcliffe's a video game designer uh, or developer who hates his boss. And then he gets kidnapped and put into an underground death video game situation called Schism. And he has to fight for his life. Will he win or will he die? 
Who will he wear, wear weird slippers and a robe in the street holding guns? Yes, he does. Yes, he will. <laughs> Put that picture, it's a really good movie. Put that picture here. Maybe. <laughs> Next up. I like this one. Gilda. I got this from, uh, I think St. Vinny's? It's a classic. We've been waiting for it our entire <laughs> collection. Gilda Marks presents Hip Hop Animal Rock Workout. Which it's... Fun for the whole family. <laughs> it's It's not called Workout on the side. It's just called Hip Hop Animal Rock. Hip Hop Animal Rock. One on the front it says it's a workout. Yeah, <laughs> everything's in this cool Hip Hop Animal Rock font, and then it's in Comic Sans for the rest of everything. <laughs> like, the rest of, I mean, some of the production turns into, like, you know, a normal typeface. Yeah. Uh, I mean, technically Comic Sans is one of the most technically normal typefaces. Yeah, but it's like it's common, just, I guess. It's not, you know, it's not a sans It's used in anything. comic books. Yeah. It's outlined here, which honestly, I don't know if you've ever seen outlined comic sans. It actually looks pretty neat. I like it. Also, it's from 2004, but look at what these kids are I wearing. I know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... I think it's a 90s tape that they put out in well, 2004. I, I said it when I talked to you about it. I'm pretty sure that kid's Fred Savage. I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> also, this has a runtime of 30 minutes, and I'm sure they sold this shit for like $20 plus shipping and handling, so... Next up, it's a movie that was released by Universal on 6-9. 69. 69. Hey. The Tech Nine guy. You know what that means. Um, and it's The Hunt. It was really good. It's not Tech Nine. 69, the Tech Nine. <laughs> Takashi. <guy>. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's The Hunt. This has a banger cast. Like, it's got so many people in it. Hilary Swank, Emma Roberts. Betty Gilpin, Ike Barinholtz. Ike Barinholtz is first build. That's insane. That's crazy. Um, also, should I, should I spoil it? He's on yeah. the back. He's on the back cover, so I can say it. Justin Hartley's in this. Oh. Green Arrow himself. Is that a spoiler? No one cares about Justin Hartley. Oh, I popped big time. Like, also, a big, big pop. And th this isn't a major spoiler, because no one cares. Macon Blair is in this movie, and he popped in, and I was like, oh my god, Dad, I think that's Macon Blair. And I looked it up, and I was like, it was Macon Blair, oh my god. Who's Macon Blair? Uh, yeah. Macon Blair directed I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. Oh, okay. Um, he's been in a bunch of movies I've seen. He's in Green Room. I used to like he's directing Holtz. the Toxic Avenger remake. Oh, okay. It's an upgrade. Is it an upgrade? Or is it Inception? Actually, we didn't own this on DVD. I always think we did, but we didn't. <laughs> that bit died. It's Inception. With uh, the Leonardo DiCaprio's and the George and Gordon Lovitz and the Ken Watanabe's and the Tom Berenger. Tom Berenger's in it. Oh, you're reading all the names from there. I was like, how yeah. do you know the cast so well? I've seen it. <laughs> you haven't. How do you know? Because I know you haven't. How many of these people were in the Dark Knight trilogy? The Pretty Christopher sure. Nolan works with the same people over and over. Ken Watanabe was in it, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, JGL was. Joseph Gordon Levitt was. JGL. I don't know who Marion Cotillard is. Okay. Ellen Page, I know, wasn't. Tom Hardy was. Silly Murphy was. Tom Berenger was not. Michael Caine was. Yeah. Hey, Tom Berenger, what's he doing in this? He's in Major League. Tom Berenger? Yeah. Isn't that the guy from Dance of the Stars? Tom Berenger? Oh, that's Tom Bergeron. <laughs> yeah. Tom Berenger. What Tom movie? Berenger is from what? October Road. He's in that? Major League. No, what's that one movie he just did where it's like him on the motorcycle on the cover? I think I bought it is for Is it Dad. A Walk in the Woods? No. Oh, it, it's American Rider? Yeah. American Dresser. American Dresser. Did we buy that? It's not down here. I think that's up north. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be up north then because it's here. He has it in all our movies in a box so they didn't get damaged. Oh, really? Yeah. He, huh. I made sure he wrote it down. Oh, so it's Inception. We <laughs> talked about it. It's a very famous movie. Did you see yeah, it? Yeah, one of the most famous I movies. I don't know if I ever talked to you about this, but because Tenet can't be released in theaters, they're re-releasing Inception in theaters yeah. now. So it's like, okay. People love it's this It's a very movie. good movie. Oh, you seen it? Yeah. Cool. Another great movie that is an upgrade, Inside Out. It's a Pixar movie. Can so I, I feel like a lot of people have seen can it. I see it's the, very, very can I good. Can the have song? You seen this? No. Sure. Get inside, get inside, I can't <laughs> afford to lose. I thought you were going to sing the get Bing Bong song. Out. It's Richard get Kind. He's Bing Bong. Bing Bong. Bing Bong. Do you remember Richard Kind Jr.? Yeah. The acclaimed WB referee. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. Do you remember uh, all that? Inside Out's great. Next up, it's The Invisible Man. 
I'm here holding it. This was uh, this was released by Universal on May 26th, and here I am holding it. Ow, ow, you're hurting me. Aw, best bros. <laughs> oh no, I don't like an Uggy. Hey, you don't do that. <laughs> this is a great movie. Oh my god. It's about like abusive relationships and stuff. But ask me how this is. How is it? I would say, out of 2020, of all the movies that have been released this year, which is not many, <laughs> that should win Best Picture at the Oscars this year. I know the Oscars aren't happening this year. But if they were, that should win. That's how good that movie is. And it was so good that Amazon... I was so glad you hit the red button. Yeah. Amazon had a like a sale going on, and I got this for 55% off. The Invisible Man Legacy Collection that has all six of the Invisible Man movies. The Invisible Man from 1933, The Invisible Man Returns, The Invisible Woman, Invisible Agent, that's the one I have paused right now, which I do not like because it's about Nazis. The Invisible Man's Revenge, and then Abbott and Costello Meet the Invisible Man. Also, it's super embossed. Ooh, that's a ghost. That's not Invisible Man. There's a bit in one of them where um, I can spoil these because they're super old. Uh, <laughs> there's a bit in one of them where the Invisible Man is like tormenting some guy, and he's pretending to be a ghost, and then he sneezes, and the <laughs> the guy goes, "Ghosts don't sneeze, do they?" And the Invisible Man goes, um. Hey, it's cold here. It's cold here living on the other uh, other side. <laughs> that's not a spoiler. That's a sneeze joke. Uh, yeah, that's next. I'm so glad I yes. have it. Hand it to me. I love this movie. And second of second many. of many many Duplass Brothers movies. I believe I bought this one. You did buy this one. I bought this one. I love this movie. It's Jeff who lives at home. If you go on my Stardust or my Instagram, my name is Lex who lives at home because of this movie. I love it very much. It's a very it's a good, good movie. movie. Uh, I will admit though, while I could have watched this since we own it, I watched Signs again last night. <laughs> That's the first line in the yeah, movie. Yeah, I know. It's the first line. <laughs> It's a very good movie. It is very good. I just watched it again recently. He, mm. Drudy, Dr hmm? try again? Drudy Greer is his wife. Yeah. Judy Greer. Yeah. I like her. She pops up in things. She's in so much. She's it's the in... last time you'll ever see these, Michael. She's in the Ordinary World of Billy Joe Armstrong. Oh yeah, she she's is. She's like the high school girlfriend that works for Joan Jett. It's a very good movie, too. Go see Ordinary World. It just got added to Netflix. It's very, very good. That's that my good high recommendation. Five stars. Well, next up, um, this is the sequel and the final movie in the DC animated universe. It's Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. This so, is fucking great. This is a banger of a movie. It's been a long, wild ride. It has. The yeah. first was uh, um, Justice League... Uh, it's is Justice League War. It's Justice League War. <laughs> yeah. Justice League War was the first, and it's based on... The continuity is based on the New 52. Yeah. So I think, since Rebirth has been going on since 2016, they're cancel They're like finally ending this universe so they can start anew. Um, I think the next one is uh, Superman, Superman Man of Tomorrow. Which looks incredible. Yeah, but that's based on a comic, so it's not part of a DC animated universe. I don't, know, um, I don't care. I love the animation style. Yeah, it looks I, I've I talked can't about wait for it. that one. I've talked can't about wait it. for it. I've talked about it, how I don't like the DCs have the same animation style since like the 90s. In all no, their these movies. are all since 2012. I know, but still. But uh, still this is a legit great movie. If you're a follower of the DC animated movies at all, go buy this one because it's amazing. Um, so many people die. And <laughs> don't say that. No, that's okay. It's just a lot. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. It stars Jim Jeffries and uh, Jim Jeffries. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> right? That one movie with him. It's Killing Gunther. Gunther. It's Gunther, the sequel to Killing Hasselhoff. Uh, it's directed, written, and stars Taron Killam, Colby Smulders, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Eight Assassins, One Target. Well, okay, you misled. <laughs> you said it's written and directed by Taron Killam, Colby Smulders, and Earl Schwarzenegger. <laughs> no, I said it's written. They could have all done it. Um, 
So I wanted to see this for a while because I saw the trailer like years ago yeah. and I thought it looked fun. And then when I saw it at Walmart in the $5 bin, I picked it up and I was like, oh, cool. And then I saw Taron Kellum directed this. I went immediately, I'm buying this. I like that guy. It's not great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Are any Arnie movies great? Yes. Do you, do you want oh, examples? You like Last Terminator. Action Hero. Oh, is that good? That's a great movie. T2. Terminator 2, Terminator, Terminator Dark Fate. Um, the Rundown, if you count that. He's not in The Rundown. He's The Rundown? When is he in The Rundown? He's literally at the beginning when The Rock walks into the bar to beat up the football players. He like walks past him and he goes, have a good one, pal, or something like that. Arnie says that to Beck? Yeah. Oh. Are you surprised I knew his character name? No, I knew his character name. No, but you Do you know Sean Lee's got? Yeah, it's Travis. We just talked about this. <laughs> it's Travis Knight. It's Travis McDowell. <laughs> it's... Travis something the third, right? Yeah. He's the third. I can't remember it, yeah. actually. It's Travis Walker the third? Maybe. I think it's Travis Walker, yeah. Um, <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, I don't remember what you talked about. I talked about killing both oh, directors. Okay, okay. back. You've this now. Next up, this is the second Kim Possible movie, um, or maybe the first, I don't know which order, but it's Kim Possible, A Sitch in Time. We already own Kim Possible movie, so the drama, which is a weird movie name. <laughs> It's called Kim Possible Movie, so the drama. Uh, this one's just Kim Possible Decision Time. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. This one, weirdly, is not on Disney+. Plus. Um, you haven't watched it yet, but you've seen it, right? No, I've never seen this one. Oh. Yeah. Unless maybe I saw it on Disney Channel back in the day. Yeah. But, yeah. That's all I have to say about it. It's in a blockbuster case. Isn't it, like, super expensive, too? You didn't mention that part. Yeah, it's like 50 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. Upgrade. Upgrade. Moonwalkers. This is kind of funny. I watched this one on Netflix before I bought it. You're getting really good at that. Well, I want to walk on the moon someday. Oh, uh, that's sad. Um, that's the rest of you doing. Yeah. This is about uh, Ron Perlman plays a CIA agent who's in charge of hiring Stanley Kubrick to direct the moon landing. And he can't get Stanley Kubrick, so instead he gets Rupert Grint's character, who is the manager of a really shitty rock band. And they're in charge of directing the moon landing, and it is, it's a wild time. It's not a great movie, but it's fun. <laughs> this is Never Been Thawed, NBT. This was Sean Anders, my favorite director. He wrote and directed this as directorial debut. Uh, Frozen Entree Minus Collectors. Sh uh, short films. Minus short, no, because the short film was after this. Okay. Yeah. This is Dark Territory directorial debut. I love Sean Anders. This is he also a, stars in it. Yeah. That was astounding. As Sean Anderson. And if you notice, because you didn't even know it was him, they spell his name differently, so that's yeah, different. Yeah. yeah. I know it's on the back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, I bought this because uh, we were talking about how I'd seen all of his work except for this one and Countdown. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to watch it because I have to now. But <laughs> You only I, produced that one, though. I, when I was telling Dad about this movie in the car, and I was like, yeah, he also did Countdown, and Dad just went, ugh. <laughs> uh, I liked this Countdown. movie. I gave. Yeah, I, I thought actually, Countdown was fun. Okay, we're not talking about Countdown. I, I I actually did a review on this on Stardust. So go check it out at Lexstyle. Uh, at Lexstyle. At Lexstyle. I thought this. I just watched this. Before you just going watched this. I watched it the it's other so day. Hilarious. It's incredible. Uh, pretty much, it's a group of seven. This is Sean Anders. We yeah, gotta yeah, point yeah. him out. He's in the it's, middle. It's seventeen people that are all in a group. Of they collect frozen, frozen entrees <laughs> of like vintage. It's the frozen entree these, collectors enthusiast yeah. club. Uh, it's all about collectors and how people can collect different things, but they happen to collect frozen entrees and they have vintage <laughs> ones. And, and two of the has, guys were in a punk band, but now they're in a Christian. Yeah, so band. I wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> and uh, their catchiest book. It's not really a spoiler per Jesus se. Jesus Christ! But did you understand that he's not Christian? Yes. That he's in it for the money because he realized in yeah. this universe, Christian rock makes yeah. more. Uh, and so Al, actually, Al was like, "We were on the right path." Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's actually a mockumentary that's based on not based on, but it's in it's considered one of those great documentaries, I guess. According to the Wikipedia page, it's ba it's in the same vein as uh, this is Spinal Tap and uh, Best in Show. Okay. Uh, these th like this these, is a great movie. These three. This is incredible. Um, but yeah, pretty much it's frozen. Good luck entrees. getting this because wasn't it running out of or when you ordered it? I don't remember. It was like twelve bucks box? though. So yeah, but wasn't yeah. it low in stock? Uh, go, buy go, go buy it. Go buy it. Go it's buy not it. streaming anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're a big Sean Anders fan, he did Sex Drive. Uh, the That's Hot my Time boy. Machines. Uh, uh, the Horrible Bosses Two. 
He did the Daddy's Home movies. He did the Daddy's Home movies, yeah. What's his next movie? Didn't we look it up? He doesn't have one set up. Who's that director who's working on all the Hanna Tim Storer. I was just going to bring him up. I was going to be like, you know whose work I'm excited for the next five years? Tim Story. Here, you're going to be in charge of our entire <laughs> cinematic universe. I can't wait for that. He's pumping out a Hanna Barbera movie. What has he done to deserve that? <laughs> I can't. He, he's a storyteller. I say that he is the best director. I, I it's love the same it. with Paul W.S. Anderson being in charge of the entire Resident Evil franchise, he's, except for like two movies. He's literally, it's just like, they're why? coming out. Why are you giving these directors he, Michael Bay of Transformers? Why? He's coming, these are coming out every single year. <laughs> so he's literally going to get working done with nonstop. one and he's moving on to the next one. We haven't talked about this in the video, but go to Tim Story's Wikipedia page. He's directed for the next like six or seven years. He has like a Wacky Races movie, a Flintstones movie, a Jetsons movie. Yeah, he's directing all these the, like, there's there's a Hammer Bear. Movies. live action cinematic universe he's doing the Tom and Jerry movie it's <laughs> like, so weird I was excited for that this year I think it got delayed yeah oh. Tim story but yeah anyways MBT never been thawed go check it out no it's, choice cafe it's very funny uh <laughs> <laughs> There's a Mexican joke in it that I don't want to spoil, but it made me die laughing. I think my favorite line is, I mean, that one's great, but we won't spoil that one. But I love the part, and it's very early in the film, when it's the same character as the firefighter. And he's like, I I know which one you're he's like about. we've been married for about uh, four and a half months. And he goes, people, they wouldn't expect us together, but, you know, we just fit so great. And, uh, you know, I will say that I... Uh, I, I did experiment through some years. I uh, He says, with the homosexuality. Yeah, with the homosexuality. I was a homosexual from age 13 to about uh, six months ago. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> like, I found the I found the ministry group. I found the ministry group, and they were like, "Hey, you've sinned." And I went, "Oh, I have." <laughs> oh, okay. it's very funny. I laughed like every two minutes. Moving on. Yeah. This is released by Disney on May 19th. This is Onward. It's the latest Pixar movie. I fucking loved this. I think a lot of people saw um, this. I, did, I watched it the day it premiered on Disney Plus and I loved it. Like, it's my favorite Pixar movie, I think, since Inside Out. Because mm. um, it's all about brothers, being brothers, and brothers loving brothers. And it was just fantastic. And their dad's just lags. And it was so good. You know, also, it doesn't come with a slip, and that's shitty. I also I got the Blu-ray and then the 4K sent to me and so yeah. Brotherly, it's a really good brotherly love is something uh, is something you know very close to us obviously and I think we do need to mention that <coughs> this may be the last update ever because you're selling the entire movie collection. <laughs> <laughs> so you can play with so your action you figures. Can play action figures. <laughs> and then back to back. Yeah. This one was released by Universal on six two and this was an upgrade. Up. Great. Because we had the Blu-ray copy, um, which didn't come with a slipcover, and then it did so well in sales, and the movie won an Oscar, yeah. that they were like, oh shit, we'll put out a 4K. Yeah. This is Parasite of the 4K. It came with a slipcover with the Academy Award uh, winner thing on there. Um, and this is a phenomenal movie. You've even seen it. It's really, really good. One best picture. It means it's, it's a very good movie. <laughs> Very, very good. It means it's very Go good. check it out. Not every movie that wins Best Picture is yeah, very, crash. very good, though. I was going to say Bohemian Rhapsody. That didn't win Best Picture. Did it? No, it won Best, best Editing. Editing. I won Best Editing, what I think. Best Picture. What year was that? 2018? Mm -hmm. That was Shape of Water. Oh, yeah. yeah. I never heard about this movie when it came out, and it's a shame that I didn't. I remember the trailer for it. You seem to remember the trailer. I also did a start of this on this one, but this is... Uh, really 20... I still watch this, because I feel like it's going to be sad. 27. You told me it's 20, funny, 20. but I'm like, I, see, I look at the case, I'm like, it looks so sad. Uh, it's Please Stand By from 2018. It's Dakota Fanning. She plays an autistic woman. And Pan Oswald. No, don't spoil him. He's Why only. He's back? Yeah, I know. It's weird because he's <laughs> only in like three minutes. Uh, he. No, she is an autistic woman that lives in a group home, and for to celebrate the uh, 50th anniversary of Star Trek, uh, Paramount Pictures has a contest to deliver. You can turn in a script, and the best will be chosen to win some prize money. And so she's been working on a 427-page script of a Star Trek movie, an original plot. And uh, her sister is supposed to mail it for her, but she can't. Her sister is Alice Eve, who is in Star Trek in the Darkness. So that's a fun little thing. It and uh, her her sister that's can't, a bad movie. Her sister I fell asleep in the theater. Her sister can't take it to the post office, so she decides that she needs to get it to Paramount. So she escapes the group home and runs across the state to get to Paramount Pictures. Can you say how long the script is? 
427 pages. It's way too long for a script. <laughs> it's very thick in the movie. <laughs> also, uh, this is totally way off topic. The guy who directed Midsommar and Hereditary, uh, Ari something, I can't remember his name. He said his next movie is going to be four hours long. Mm. Way too long for a movie. Fuck off. <laughs> I will say in this movie, uh, obviously I'm autistic and I love Star Trek, so it was great. Uh, Are you a Star yes. Trek fan? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Tony Revolori, he's not in it too much, but he's in this and he's amazing in it. He is Flash Thompson in the Spider in MCU. Oh. Yeah. Dickhead. Yeah. He is a co worker of uh, Dakota Fannin's character. Her name is uh, Wendy. Uh, but this is a very this is a fantastic this is a five star oh, you movie. Get the next one. This is a this is a five star movie. So go check this one out. Is it's it on sad? Hulu. Uh, it's a dramedy. Okay. Because I feel like it's gonna be sad when I watch it. It's not. So here's my problem with it is that like she she doesn't have like fi high function in autism or anything like the fact that she lives in a group home and can't be you know, uh, with her so family and everything. Yeah. And so the problem is like. Her dog, like, she owns a dog in it, but her dog technically isn't a service dog, so, like, she doesn't get to bring it with her to some places, and she, I don't think, knows that she has autism. It's like, she knows she's different, but they haven't told her, yeah. and so, uh, throughout the movie, you see her interact with all these different people, and no one treats her right. Like, that's how it's sad, is that she can't express that she has autism, so she can't, she's just treated, like, she'll walk up and, like, have really struggles, and she has a notepad, she has to write down rules and stuff, and people don't understand her, so they're just putting pushing her aside and so it's sad because you are seeing how okay. the world is just you know bashing her Ugh. it's really good though next up it's the third of the dopeless movies that we have <laughs> i bought this one you bought this one it's the puffy <laughs> chair uh which we really like this movie it's really very good, good. Very good. Um, it's netflix made it it's got yeah that's so weird it's got the netflix logo. never been thought also was made by netflix i bought two netflix movies from back in the day <laughs> <laughs> this one's got what's her name Catherine Asselton. It's his wife, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's his wife. Yeah. Um, Mark Douglas and her were both in the league together. Yeah. They weren't married in the league, though. No. Which is weird. They hated each other in the league. Yeah. They didn't hate each other. Well, technically, everyone yeah. in that movie. That this is a really good movie. It. Check it out if you've never seen it. It's maybe on Netflix? Still? I don't think maybe. it is. I don't know. It's a Netflix movie. Yeah. They should. Fun fact, Bat only knows football players if they were mentioned in the league. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next up, it's an honor to get this one. Upgrade. Upgrade. It's The Room. Um, Blu-ray. With Tommy Wiseau. His name is <coughs> big enough on it. Can you really trust anyone? Such a... Remember the ad at the beginning? Yeah. And then there's two different logos, yeah. back to back. <laughs> I feel like everyone's seen this now. And if they haven't, what are you doing? Yeah, it's on but, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Uh, I remember when we saw it, because I knew you didn't know how it ended. I feel like yeah. I can spoil the room because I don't. Ended. No? Okay. Uh, I didn't. You didn't know. Yeah, you somehow had avoided how it ended. We saw this in theaters. They did a re-release party then for us. Oh, they show it in theaters like every yeah. year, all the time. Yeah, and uh, they, so we went to see it, and I didn't know that he didn't know how it ended. And it ended, and he's like, huh? And I was like, oh, you didn't know. He was supposed to be a Giant vampire. also maybe a vampire. <laughs> I don't know yet. Next up. This is one I didn't really have any interest in ever watching, and then I got it, and I watched it, and wow, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, this is The Shining, directed by Stanley Kubrick, with Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall, and wow, it is really, really good. It's one of the iconic moments, slipcovers, and like just the normal in the inside. It was really, really good. Five yellow, stars. I loved the Yellow Maze Steelbook from this, and you were like, well, I don't like the movie, so I'm not going to buy it. And now you love it, and I want you to buy that Steelbook. It's such a good movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I already ordered Dr. Sleep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> got it for free. I saw this movie in theaters. I saw the first one in theaters with you and our grandmother. I saw this one with... Uh, he hit you. What? He hit you? No, Lynch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it took, I think our grandma and Lynch went to see this oh, movie. Okay. Uh, it's the Smurfs 2. It's the one where 
uh, Gargamel uh, creates the Naughties and kidnaps Smurfette. So I had seen it before also. Oh, really? I saw it at Rockies. Oh, okay. I thought this was the like the third one. Yeah, the, no, Lost, the, third Village, one the Lost Village. Was which worse. I haven't seen, I guess. Which suppose I remember... And it has a new continuity. Like, it's yeah. a reboot. I remember Rain Wilson went and did press for Smurfs 3 and was like, yeah, it's going to be great, I'm in it a lot. And then he wasn't in it a lot or something. I don't really know, I never saw the third one. Or the first one, I guess. I don't really we know. We saw the first in theaters. No, but I mean, if it's a oh. reboot already... So it's not the same cast? No. Who is Papa Smurf? I don't know. Who cares? Next up, this is from Paramount, and you it's know, released on May 19th. You know what? It's, it's, uh, May 19th. It's fun that uh, Smurfs is a Blu-ray. <laughs> this is Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, this was a really fun movie. Really we good. saw it in theaters. Um, and it looks great in 4K. Yeah. I, I watched it again because I wanted to see it. Again. And uh, it looks really good in 4K. It's the kind of movie that, like, you know, like, you're just... It's so bright and colorful. You have your housewarming party, party and you go on your Trivago... Not your Trivago. Your, Zillow. You go on your Zillow.coms and you buy a brand new apartment and you invite all your friends over and they get there and like, what a nice apartment. And, and you're like, you I got on go Zillow.com. Then you guys go to Olive Garden. And then you get your Olive Garden Street Pass or whatever it's called and you guys go to that for dinner and then you watch Sonic. It's that kind of movie. And if you got the 4K, it also comes with an exclusive comic book, um, The Adventures of Sonic and Donut Lord. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And uh, Jim Carrey's good in it. He is very he's good very in good it. in it. But he's not very good in real life. Remember that, folks. He's an asshole. A little bit. Next up, this is a movie that I bought because I thought it was going to be dumb because the cover looks silly, but it was actually really good. It's Think Like a Dog with Josh Duhamel and Megan Fox and um, Todd Sedgwick is the voice of the dog. And I can't believe that Josh Duhamel and Fergie got divorced. I'm still in awe about it. <laughs> also, Brian Callen, he's from... Um, the Goldbergs and Schooled, he plays the coach. Mm, yeah. He's in this, he's hilarious. And um, the guy who plays Raj from The Big Bang Theory, he's also in this oh, movie. Oh, his name is... Uh, don't remember. Okay. Well, can I tell you who directed this? Yeah. Gil Younger. Gil Younger. We did two of his movies for our 25 Days of Christmas last year. Oh, which two? Christmas Bounty? Yeah. And Santa's Little Helper. Really? I <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think he, he's directed tons of really weird stuff. I know we've talked about it before, yeah. but I love that the Blu-ray Digitals have been faded into covers recently. Yeah. I don't think they made Think Like a Man 2. They made they made Think Like a Man 2 and they even did a third one, I think. No, I think you're talking thinking of Why Did I Get Married? No, Why did I get Think married Like too? a Man starring Kevin Hart by Tim Story. Okay. It's the weird bachelor party movies or whatever. I never saw them. Next up, I've seen this one. This movie is incredible. I bought this and made you and Dad watched it. Dad really loved it, and you were like, uh. I didn't really like this it. This is where I leave you with Jason Bateman, Adam Driver, Corey Stoll, Tina Fey, and the lady that, uh, what's her name? Not Rose Byrne, but she's also in it. Jane Fonda, Catherine Hahn. It's a Sean Levy film, who you love, John Fele Levy. Music I by. I don't really. No? Did he direct Night at the Museum? Maybe. Sean Levy? Uh, and Michael Giacchino did the movie, or Chino. And who doesn't love his music? Star Trek, Doctor Strange, others. <laughs> uh, I love this movie. It's one of my It's so my sad. It time. is so goddamn sad. You got done with it and went, okay, I get why you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, it's Ooh. Twister. Another uh, weather movie. This is better than... The Roland Emmerich ones, but I still didn't really like it. It's directed by John DeBont, who directed Speed and Speed 2. Um, you know what? Phil Paxton's really good in this, and Helen Hunt's great. What about Phil but, uh, Filsey? I didn't really like this movie. What about Filsey? Who's Filsey? Filsey Hoffman. Oh, he's okay. Yeah. Also, did you see the boo with the cow? Yeah, I saw the boo with the cow. Uh, I actually did find this one. You pay, I made you buy it, and yeah. then you watched it and loved it. This yeah, it's is a, really good. Uh, VFW, it's about a bunch of old people that are in a VFW. Uh, you know, people that, like, you know, vets that are would be in a VFW. And they're attacked by, like, mutant punks. Yeah. And they have to save the world, right? Or just the VFW? <laughs> just their VFW. Just their VFW. <laughs> yeah. I haven't watched and it And the yet. life of a girl. And the life of a girl, apparently. Yeah, so there's stakes. Uh, if I fan-casted it, uh, just based on the characters on the cover... Wolfram. 
No, better. Better than Will Ferrell. Uh, we got Willie Nelson up front. Uh, this would either be... Uh, it would either be uh, Michael... Uh, Michael, he always plays a douche. I don't know. A sport. You love Michael. Uh, <laughs> okay. He's in My Name is Earl. Yeah. Come on, Michael. He looks, I don't know. He's, he's going to woof. So we got him here. Uh, I can't remember his name, but it's like the Michael something. I'll, I'll look him up after this. Or the the, the vocalist from um, Men at Work. He looks just like him, too. And, uh, yeah, you said it was really good? It is really good. So, yeah. You talk about the next one, and I, I actually... I haven't seen that one, but I've seen the original and I liked it. Another. Um, this is one of the Spielberg movies that I had never seen before, and now I've seen it. I've seen a lot of his movies, probably more than any other director ever. Um, this was released from Paramount on 519, and it's the 4K of War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise. This is really good. It's about Tom Cruise is like your average Joe dad, and he's just protecting his kids while fucking crazy shit happens around him. Looks really good in 4K. Also, the scene where he's running on the street while people are being vaporized around him and, like, dust is getting in his mouth and shit. It's gross. It's really gross. Michael Rappaport. Huh. Michael Rappaport, that guy. Here, you're next up. I'm next up. Next up is Watchmen, the complete series, because it's a limited series. This was released by Warner Brothers on June 2nd. Yeah, it's an HBO limited series. Yeah, we haven't watched it yet. So no, I have not it. watched it yet. I've heard it's really, really, really good. I've heard it's very um, political. It's also, it's only nine episodes, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be really good. Tim Blake Nelson, you know, I just watched, watched it with him. him. He's yeah. in The Big Year. Oh, really? Yeah. He's also in Incredible Hulk. And all the Cohen really Owen plays. Wilson breaks his arm in The Big Year. Tim Blake Nelson's? Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. I mean, not on purpose. He falls asleep while driving and he crashes the car into a tree. Oh. And he's like, I think I hurt, I think I broke my arm. And Owen Wilson goes, shut up. And he walks over and sees a bird. Because, you know, they're looking for birds. So it was just a fun, I just watched Big Year. It's a very good movie. <laughs> I really loved it. Next up, this was released from Warner Brothers on 519. And it's the way back. <laughs> The Way Back with um, Ben Affleck. And this was one that I was really excited to see in theaters. Like, I remember when the when first the trailer dropped, I was like, we're seeing this in theaters. And you're like, we're not seeing this in theaters. And then the pandemic happened and everything we stopped. We didn't see it in theaters. I loved it. I thought this was a fantastic movie. Like, one of my, I would say this is one of my favorite Ben Affleck movies ever made. I thought his role was really good. And it's kind of like a, like a rehab role is for it, him. Is it his movie? Like it's definitely it's, his movie. So you could say it's... It's, it's could, so much his movie that it's... Like, he, this role is very personal for him, and you can tell. You could say that it's The Way Affleck. Yes. Cool. It's really, really, really good. Uh, like, I was genuinely surprised by how good it was. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. Last up, it's We Summon the Darkness. It's written by Alan Treza and directed by Mark Myers. It stars Alexandria, or Alexandria Dargio. D Didario, Amy Forsyth, and John Knoxville. Yeah, it's gonna be one hell of a party. Uh, this is <laughs> released a by weird priest. This is released by Lionsgate on six nine. Don't if you needed a weird priest, wouldn't you call Johnny Knoxville? Probably not. Actually, he he's would also. Be I don't want to spoil anything, but he's only got like ten minutes screen time. Oh really? Movie, yeah. Does he do a stunt? No. Cool again. Uh, the a cool little fade bit. where it just says Blu-ray Digital. You also, know. I liked this so much. Did this you? was really really good. A would lot I like of fun. It? Um, I think so. Yeah. It's not super gory or anything, and they don't ruin anyone's life. I don't mind the, I don't mind gory shit. I just, my thing was, is, is it a horror or is it a thriller? It's more of a comedy horror. Oh, okay. My, just, my problem with horror, I don't like supernatural horror stuff. I don't either. Because I don't like, like ghosts sit, and stuff like that. I don't like to sit there and go, well, that's not scary. Yeah. That's not happening. Yeah, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Watching the great outdoors. And it, it doesn't play out how you think it's going to play out. Like, it's really surprising. I actually got legitimately scared watching The Great Outdoors because there's a scene where there's a bat on John Candy's face and I was just, I literally covered up and I was like, I'm just tell me when the scene's over because uh, I <laughs> don't like bat. Scene. That's my horror movie. Just give me, like, a VR or a Will you ever watch Bats? No. I don't ever want to openly watch a movie with bats. I mean, Black Sheep will always tune into Bats because the bats never show up. What about Batman when he throws that... The, the he turns the sonar the on and all the 
all the bats swarm yet. What about Batman Begins when he gets swarmed? Yeah, in the tower. Yeah, no, he's running he, on the stairs. When he fall, no, when he falls in the hole. Oh, when they're. Or well, yeah. at the end when he's when running on the stairs. I don't know. All the bats oh, swarm. Yeah, yeah. On the Batman. Place. See, Batman. I don't mind the bats because they're fake, <laughs> and you kind of don't ever see like bats in them. You just see like the black outline like yeah. flying. Like they don't do a lot of work for the bats. But Except no, in remember in a uh, Batman. Like the eighty nine one, yeah. where the bat like flies right yeah. in Michael Keaton's face. Yeah, that's freaky. Uh, in Batman Begins, because they're like just playing with a rock or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. Like they're just playing like rock tag. He has a variation, <laughs> <laughs> and then he falls you get in the hole. Rock, curious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How many yeah. variations of tag can you name? Yeah, that's the tag. Uh, flash, er, flash tag, flashlight tag, tag, flashlight tag, tag, freeze tag, um, rocks. Underwater, underwater tag. tag. Underwater tag. What was the? There was a fourth, jumping tag. There was a fourth tag that we did have. It was similar to flashlight tag, wasn't it? I don't. Remember. I don't know. I found out what uh, about night bowling or whatever that was called. <laughs> lawn bowling. No, not lawn bowling. I knew about that, but there's this type of bowling. It's called a like glow in the dark bowling, and you take glow sticks, you fill gallons of water up. I pointed, but they can't see. You fill gallons of water. With with water, you fill up empty cans with water. And yeah. You drop a glow stick in it, and then you set it up, and then you are outside in the middle of the dark, and all you can see is the glow sticks, and then you roll a ball. I thought that was really fun. I didn't do it. I should have done the camping, but huh. I, didn't. I just went camping. That's all. This <laughs> this is gonna be a long video, probably. This is the outro. It's the part where we do the outro. Give it a, like this video and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. It really helps the channel out a lot. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and hit that notification bell so you get us all the time. It's free and you can always change your mind. Duh. But we hope you don't. We hope you don't. We got more updates coming soon. Um, another horror one. Uh, the more horror. The more horror. And I think that we're just going to include the Dollar Tree one into that one. So oh. it'll be another big one. And then we've already started on the next one after that. So it's crazy. We, we've been buying a lot of weird stuff off Facebook Marketplace. So. What are you doing tomorrow? I don't know. Because you see, when I, I woke going up, and blind. When I, yeah, I was going to say, when I woke up today, you're um, like, hey, going blind today. Okay. So, yeah, that's all. I'm Bat Tracy. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Stardust, Letterboxd, everything on Bat Tracy01. Hey, <laughs> Lex, you can follow me on. I'm really tired. You I'm can too. follow me I on Instagram and earlier. <laughs> Straight to is Jerk and on Twitter to Did All. Check out my Stardust and Twitch at Lexstyle. You can follow the channels the Collective on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Punk Rock Blues. And you can put Twitter for the channel? Yeah. It's weird. Tweet more oh, than I, Instagram. I think it was because the U YouTube you, you could link yeah. videos to yeah, and it's like you can't do that anymore. Yeah, so. so I I came up with an idea for it to tweet stuff, and I don't remember it. I should it just use that Twitter to tweet any movie I'm watching. I just wish you gotta start. You should put the the Instagram on your phone, and when you get done with an, uh, making a thumbnail and the video's live, post about it. Yeah. Gotta do that. We keep talking about how we're gonna do that, and you never do it. Yeah, I always forget. Uh, you can pledge to our Patreon at patreoncom blues If you love us, chuck us a buck or three if you can. Now the Patreon was outlined for a second. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's all spooky. <laughs> Aliens. What are about spooky. Ghostbusters? Do you count that as a horror movie? That's a supernatural horror, right? No. Uh, do you count it's Jurassic ghosts? Park? Yeah, it's definitely a horror movie. Can't see. Yeah, just don't make me watch anything with bats. Gremlins. Gremlins is definitely a horror Gremlins movie. Gremlins is a Gremlins holiday is horror. It's a holiday <laughs> horror movie, yes. Alright. Bye. But what about Jungle to Jungle with the piranhas? There are piranhas? <laughs> yeah, there's a piranha scene. <laughs> okay, bye. There's also a scene where he's like a hundred feet in the air on a tower, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch that movie, Jungle Jungle? I've seen it. It's the like, sequel to Jungle One Jungle. Fifteen years ago, probably. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>